All right, everybody, a very, very good evening and a warm welcome to an incredibly special evening with Pick and Pay, the Pick and Pay Wine Club. And uh, thank you all very much for joining us as we welcome in Paul Kluver. We welcome in a rather special chef. Uh, and most importantly, we welcome in so many of you from all over South Africa. Now, uh, we had one of these about a month ago and we had 100 people join us. Such was the success of that evening. Uh, we've now got 160 of you uh, from all over the place. I think that's about an 8,000 percent increase uh, based on my rather uh, simple and elementary mathematics. Uh, but it's great to see so many people joining us uh, for what promises to be a terrific, terrific evening. My name is Dan Nicol, uh, host 
host of the Nanical Show, but also host of Dan Really Likes Wine, which is uh, my real space of indulgence. It's a, a weekly wine show uh, that operates in partnership with Pick and Pay, uh, where I've got a really difficult job, and I hope you all feel some sympathy for me. Uh, I've got to every single day uh, taste and sample different wine from across South Africa. It's not easy. Uh, my wife refuses to believe I have a real job, uh, and it's a great way uh, to get a regular reminder of what I think is one of South Africa's uh, most fabulous attributes, and that is the quality of our wine, our winemakers, and the vintages that we produce year in and year out. And we're going to be tasting two vintages this evening. I'll tell you a little bit more about them in just a moment. Uh, before we do that, though, as well as the welcome, uh, just a couple of things to throw forward to. Uh, you should have all of your food from your package uh, that was delivered uh, by Pick and Pay a little earlier on today, and a, a big thank you you for that uh, and uh, when we jump over to our studio with our chef and our winemaker in just a second now uh, you'll immediately get one or two very firm instructions of what to do to get ready I'll get uh, told to do so as well uh, just so that we have your food ready it's fairly simple stuff this evening uh, but that we can make the most of the hour or so that we have in store with us uh, we've got not just uh, a great uh, a great chef. We've also got a great wine brand, a great winemaker. Uh, and the winemaker who's joining us this evening is a guy called Andres Berger. He makes wine out of Paul Kluver. Some of you might have been out to Paul Kluver, uh, possibly to taste the wine, possibly to do some mountain biking. It's got some lovely single track, some slightly terrifying bridge contraptions, and it's been a part for many years of the Absa Cape Epic, so you might know it in that context. Uh, but for me, it is the wine, and in particular, two varietals. The two varietals we often think of as the Burgundian varietals, the Chardonnay and the Pinot Noir, that really headline the Paul Kluver wine story. And we're going to be trying those this evening in the very capable hands of Andres, who's an extremely gifted winemaker and is able to combine that beautiful, cool Elgin climate that speaks to Chardonnay and Pinot Noir so well, uh, but also the terroir and his own considerable abilities as a winemaker. But as good as wine is on its own, I always feel it is so much better with some food. And tonight, you've got two options, and Jonathan will explain them in just a moment in slightly more detail. But one is charcuterie, cold meat, cheese. It's really hard to beat with a bottle of wine. Uh, but then the art of gnocchi. And I say art quite deliberately because there's not that much of an art to gnocchi. Once you get through the basics, you can produce a dish that looks amazing, seems really complicated, impresses people no end, but isn't actually that hard to do. And if you haven't made gnocchi tonight, well, you're in for a wonderful surprise this evening because from picking up your gnocchi off the shelf at Pick and Pay to getting home and getting on the stove half an hour later, you can have something fabulous. And tonight is going to illustrate that. And tonight won't just be the wonderful ingredients from Pick and Pay, but also Jonathan from Sourced Food. He's worked with Pick and Pay for years and years and years and years and years. He looks very young, but I think he was at school with Raymond Ackerman uh, and he puts together a wonderful selection of meals, some great food, and you are in fabulous hands between Jonathan and Andres this evening. You're also in the hands of myself and the Pick and Pay team. And so a couple of things I'd like you to do just before I hand over to the studio and we get cooking and your kitchens turn into works of art. We love to give some stuff away to you. Now, we already have. We've sent you uh, the uh, vouchers that you've received in your package. Look out in particular for that 100 Rand discount voucher uh, for online shopping. Uh, there is also, though, the chance to win 200 Rand in Smart Shopper points. And it's really simple to do. Over the course of the next hour, as you're making your food, as you're pouring your wine, as you're grabbing the fire extinguisher, if things haven't gone quite according to plan, we'd love you to take some photos. And while one hand is stirring your gnocchi, with the other, post up on Instagram, on Facebook, on, uh, on Twitter, uh, what you're doing and tag two things very simply, a hashtag PNP Wine Club. I think you can work out what the PNP stands for and also hashtag Paul Kluver. And at the end of it, based on those photos, our team will have a look and we'll announce five winners there. You're also, of course, a winner if you're a member of the Pick and Pay Wine Club. And I hope you all are because it's free to be part of and you get some wonderful benefits. Three times the smart shopper points, free delivery on six bottles or more from the online selection. And every single month, 10 wines with a great discount case deals as well as magnum deals and it all speaks to pick and pay who've got 25 million bottles of south african wine committed for purchase onto shelves and allowing us to drink some wonderful wonderful south african wine that's what you're going to be doing this evening 
I've got in particular uh, the Pinot Noir, uh, which has got these lovely earthy mushroomy type feels. It's uh, going to speak delightfully to the gnocchi a little later, but also work really well with the charcuterie. And, uh, and feel free to do that through the course of the evening. Try both wines with both dishes, because as much as myself or Andres or Jonathan can suggest things, uh, I think it comes down to your individual palates and what you really do enjoy. So on that note, I'm going to sit back uh, and watch. Uh, Dan really likes wine. He's got a, a long uh, and, uh, and proud history with Pick and Pay, and it's events like this that make the wine club and the relationship quite so special. So I'm excited. I hope all of you are sitting in our studio and getting ready to go to alarmingly good-looking young men who know an awful lot about food and an awful lot about wine. Uh, so please say a very good evening wherever you are in South Africa or perhaps beyond to Jonathan and Andres to take you through your food and wine. All right, thank you very much, Dan. That was a lovely intro and uh, thank you very much. As Dan mentioned, my name is Jonathan Molden. I'm here with the winemaker from Paul Kluver, um, Andres Berger, and welcome to the third of our Pick and Pay Winemakers Tables in association with Paul Kluver. It's a, quite a special one today. It's our first time that we've actually, from a food perspective, we're actually gonna be cooking. You guys are in your kitchen. You've got all your stove, your, your everything ready, and we're gonna be tasting two beautiful wines and creating some really great dishes that pair beautifully with that. So we've got two wines, don't we, um, Andres? Yes. We have today. Thank you, Jonathan. We'll have the uh, Paul Kluver Estate Chardonnay yes. and the Paul Kluver Estate Pinot Noir, both of the 2018 vintage. And I do think they're gonna pair particularly well, both with the Chakotri and the Gnocchi tonight. Perfect, exactly. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making two dishes. Um, as Andres mentioned, the starter, what we're going to do is we're going to be making a charcuterie board. And basically, charcuterie is a French word for sort of cured and cured meats. So we've got a beautiful um, home uh, smoked brizola, as well as a cheese from, uh, from the local cheese, which is from Klein River. We've got some really nice um, pickles and a little bit of the um, some uh, watermelon preserve, some nuts and stuff, and that'll work really well with our first wine, which we're going to be doing, which is the Chardonnay. But before we get going on that, um, I just wanted to chat through a little bit about how we're going to be cooking the second dish, which is our gnocchi. It's a beautiful, creamy gnocchi. It's got some mushrooms. It's got some truffle, which is very exciting. But I just want to, before we get going, just give you a little bit of uh, some house rules and what we're going to be doing with our equipment. So you would have all received your boxes. You've got two boxes in there. One of them is filled with all the ingredients for our uh, first dish, which is the charcuterie. The second one you'll see is for the gnocchi. Um, and inside one of those boxes, you'll see a little packet of dried mushrooms. These are beautiful dried mushrooms. They're exotic mushrooms. Um, pick and pay stock some really great exotic mushrooms. And all you really need to do is to preserve these is to dry them out in the oven, which we've done. So what I want you to do is um, if you read in your welcome note, what we needed to do before was also boil a kettle of water. So if you haven't done it, I'm sure you maybe you've got your husband or your wife or your kids involved. Get them to boil the, the kettle of water and you can get yourself a glass or a, a metal bowl. And what we're going to do is we're going to rehydrate those mushrooms in some boiling water. You don't need to use all of the boiling water. You can use a portion of it for the dried mushrooms. So if you want to follow, just get your bowl and you've got your kettle of boiling water, you're going to basically place all of the mushrooms into a bowl like that, and you're gonna pour over some boiling water. Thank you, Andres, my, my sous chef over here. Just a little bit like that, that's perfect. And then the rest of it you can put into your pot, pot. and just keep that simmering. So while we're doing our first dish, our mushrooms are soaking beautifully and, and the water is boiling, ready to go for our gnocchi. If you want to add a little bit of salt to that water, please do, just to give it a little bit more flavor. But we can set this aside and we can start talking about the wines and we can move on to our first dish. All right. So if everybody wants to do that, use, as I said, your, your sous chef to, to help out with that. And then we can move on. So the first dish that we're going to make, as I said, is a charcuterie board. And that's going to be paired with the, with the Paul Kluver Estate wine. 
Andres, do you want to explain a little bit about Paul Kluver and a little bit about uh, your job as a winemaker yes. at Paul Kluver? Um, thanks, Jonathan. I'm, you know, like uh, I'm being introduced, I'm Andres Berger, the winemaker at Paul Kluver Wines. And uh, Paul Kluver Wines is the first uh, farm actually to plant commercial vineyards in the Elgin Valley. Elgin is, is actually known for, for apples. It's mm. the coolest viticultural area in South Africa. But in 1987, we planted the first commercial vineyards in the valley. In 1996, we started building a winery. In 1997, we started making wine. And I've been the first winemaker at the property, and I've just completed my 25th vintage this year. And what is amazing about Elgin is that we've got this cool climate that gives us very delicate, very elegant fruits. Mm. You know, and my my role as a winemaker is to to highlight the typicity of Elgin and, and the terroir where the, and how we grow our grapes. And what I try to do is to capture that in, in the bottle. So our business focuses on, on Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. We also make Sauvignon Blanc and Riesling, but the, the only red wine we make is Pinot Noir because it is suited to cool climate and that's what we're about. It's amazing. I have uh, tried the Pinot Noir before and I think it's absolutely outstanding and I cannot wait to try it with the, with the gnocchi as well. That's really interesting. Super. So you've been the winemaker from the beginning, from when Paul Kluver started. Yes. That's, that's amazing. Great. And um, we were chatting a little bit earlier about it as well. And the, the interesting thing about that is that you, you really get to know the land and you really get to know the, the soil and exactly how it changes from one season to the next which is an unbelievable knowledge to have. Absolutely. The, the, um, what, is, what is amazing about having that experience for 25 years is that I can almost predict sometimes how a vineyard is going to react in, in, just, you know, in a stress situation when, or no. what, you know, as the seasons differ. And um, what is also interesting is that so, you know, on Chardonnay, yeah, we're yeah. tasting Chardonnay tonight, you know, what is really important with Chardonnay is the selection of the cooper, the guys that makes the barrels for us. And what is quite interesting is that certain vineyard sites work better with certain barrels mm. uh, compared to others. And um, that is important. And that you can only learn through, the, through years of experience and learning um, the vineyards and how they react. And, try to get the best out of the grapes yeah, you know, during the year. Yeah, That's fantastic. Um, so oh yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to maybe start with a little bit of our charcuterie platter. Just remember also, guys, please take photos of your dishes. Use the hashtag PMP Paul Kluver, PMP Wine Club, and post them to your social media. As Dan mentioned, you are, will stand a chance of one five lucky winners to win 200 Rand worth of Smart Shopper. Please also comment inside the comment box below. Um, tell us what you're feeling. If you want us to answer any of your questions, we're very happy to do so. Cool. So in your box, you'll find this, the first one, which is the, um, the charcuterie. So you'll see there's two pieces of cheese, some beautifully cured meat. Um, it's enough for two cheese boards. We've also included this lovely little board for you. So you can plate all your charcuterie on top of it. Um, and what we'll do, it's you really can just play around quite nicely with it. You've got one piece of cheese, but you can slice it in half. You can cut it at an angle if you'd like. Sometimes if you want to just lay it up. When you're making a charcuterie board, it really is about playing around with different flavors, different meats and stuff. And um, as I mentioned, we've got this quite nice sort of semi-mature cheese. It's got quite a nice oaky sort of flavor. And we thought maybe that would also go quite well with the Chardonnay. Absolutely. Yeah. Shall I, shall I pour us a glass? I think we should definitely pour ourselves a glass. Fantastic. So as we're going along with this, as I said, put your board down, take your meat out of your packet. Um, there's in the interleaves. Um, so you can basically take it out, place it onto the board when making a, a charcuterie board or anything for that matter, when it comes to plating, it's always nice to create a little bit of height. So you've got this flat piece of, of uh, cured meat. I always like to just kind of give it a little bit of a sort of a turn just to create a, maybe what you could call like a little rose or something. Give it a turn, give it a scrunch up. There we are, place it down there. I'm gonna put one on that side so you can see. There we go. You can try and play around with it. You've got quite a few little pieces of meat here. This is gonna pair beautifully with that. And I'm gonna place that around the board. So we've placed down our cheese, we've placed down a little bit of meat. You can throw a little bit of one of these in your mouth. It's a cured meat, so it really has taken time to age. It's got a beautiful kind of robust flavor. All right, should we chat a little bit about the, um, the Chardonnay? Chardonnay? Yes. So 
The, what is amazing about Chardonnay is that Chardonnay is one of those varieties that really works well when it's fermented in oak. Mm. So we, we ferment our Chardonnay 100% in, in barrels, but not all is new. Only about 25% is, is new because we don't want overt oak flavors in the wine. You know, um, a very good friend, fellow winemaker friend of mine always says he hates it when he's got to be a carpenter before he can taste the wine. <laughs> and, and the idea of, of oaking of Chardonnay, it's, support, it's there to support the wine. What we want is we want to show the citrus delicate flavors that we have in Chardonnay you know, the slight creaminess of the aging on the lees and most important, that minerality on the aftertaste, you know, yeah. and that sort of lingeringness that you want in a, in a Chardonnay. Yeah. Um, in, and sometimes you get very rich, buttery styles of Chardonnay. Mm. I don't, you know, we in a cool climate, so what we want is we actually want the freshness. We want the citrus flavors, a little bit of, you know, sort of uh, orange peel, you know, lemon zest kind of flavors that we want in the wine, a little bit of grapefruit um, on the on the flavor profile, and then the creaminess and the subtle subtlety of oak in the background, because you don't want the oak to be overwhelming. That's very interesting that you say that, because, um, you know, I think that Chardonnay always had quite a sort of a reputation to be quite oaky and creamy and, and full and almost like Quite a heavy, heavy white wine. Yes, you know what? What you know? There's a stage where people talked about the ABC, anything but Chardonnay. <laughs> um, but what is really important is, you know, it's as we've learned not to overplay our hands with with too much oak. And um, at a stage, winemakers, you know, thought of of they'll make a better wine if they throw more oak at it. And actually, that's not the case. You know, mm. you actually want the oak to support the wine and not dominate the wine. And that is really important. The other thing that we do, would, what is interesting is, um, I remember my brother-in-law coming into the winery one day and he said to me, I look stressed. You know, and normally winemakers are stressed during harvest time, but I was particularly stressed because my Chardonnay wasn't fermenting. And so Paul asked me why don't I just add yeast and do what I normally do. And, my, and I actually said to him that we, we didn't add any yeast because I don't want to add yeast. I want to go through what we call a non-inoculated fermentation where the natural yeast population from the vineyards and in the cellar actually takes over the fermentation. And the first question uh, he then asked me is what, what is the financial risk to the business mm -hmm. if something goes wrong? You know, and obviously I had to explain that, but in the end, the reward is so much more. So with the, our Chardonnay, since 2001, we have not inoculated the wine. We don't add commercial yeast to it. We mm. just, we handle this wine as naturally as possible. We don't add setting additives. We just settle the wine naturally. It goes straight to barrel for fermentation without inoculation of yeast and let the, cellar, the population that's in the cellar from the vineyards take over the fermentation. It's a much mm. slower process but it's so much more complexity and rewarding that you get in the wine. At That's the end so of interesting. Yeah. Is that quite unique to, to Paul Cleaver? Well, it's, well, for the Chardonnay, it's, mm. it's unique for us. It's not so unique in the industry anymore. Yeah. You know, um, if you go to Burgundy and, mm. and you speak to where, and Burgundy is the place where Chardonnay and Pinot Noir is grown in the world. You know, if you go to wine, wineries there, they don't know what commercial yeast is. Yeah. You know, this is how they've made wine traditionally for years, for years and years. And, years. Yeah. and and basically what we want to do is we want to go back to that. Absolutely. You know, um, go back to what, you know, and basically express, and that's another way of expressing terroir. That's a way of expressing the typicity of the grapes, where they're grown and how they're grown and express themselves through, through a, a spontaneous natural fermentation. Amazing. That's really, really great. Um, cool guys, so I would imagine that you are making your cheese boards as we speak, you're putting down your that cured beef brizola, you've got your cheese on your board, as you'll see also in the box you've also got some beautiful little um, olives which you can just take them out of the liquid and pop that onto the board as well. Um, you've also got a nice little packet of some roasted and some spiced nuts which give a little bit of crunch and it gives something ni quite nice to the, to the um, charcuterie board. This is perfect for a little late afternoon snack. Get your friends around, get your family around, um, make up a little cheese board and serve that with a beautiful bottle. Oh, goodness. A beautiful bottle of, of wine. Pop that down over there. 
And then the last little bit is what we've got here is a little bit of very South African watermelon confit or the watermelon preserve. And that just gives it a nice little sweetness. You can place that onto the board. Sometimes what I like to do um, with some different cheeses is actually use some of this really nice syrup and give it, just pour it over slightly over the cheese. Um, and that really works quite well with that sweetness as well as against that, uh, that uh, saltiness of the brizola as well as the cheese. So have a little make through, have a look at your board, make it, make it together. I hope that I'm going slow enough for you guys to actually do it yourself. And once you are ready, please take a photo of your dishes. And as I said, please um, post that also to social media. So once you're done with that, you can, we can start maybe doing a little bit of a tasting. And um, when we talk about food and wine pairing, um, we kind of, there's, you know, there's, there's been myths about food pairing and, and there's been this old sort of like stuck up way that one thing only goes, one wine only goes with one food, but really it is about experimenting. It's really about trying new flavors with new wines, buying a bottle, eating it with, with something, just giving it a little bit of like a different um, sort of exposure onto your, your wine and, and food pairing. So today we've obviously got the Chardonnay sure. and we've got these different, uh, different items from uh, our cheese and our, and our, and our um, brizola. And let's give it a little bit of a taste. Yes. I've made one up for you as well, oh, which I'll shift Sit over right there. there. There we thank go. You. And that one over there. So hopefully you guys have got your, your boards ready and you want to, uh, and you've got your glasses ready. You poured yourself a, a glass, take photos of those, of those boards and uh, raise a glass. And let's do a little bit of tasting. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. All right. What is, what is really important is, you know, the, to say that you've got to drink white wine with white meat and a red wine with red meat, that doesn't exist anymore. You no. know, it's, it's, I always say the best wine is the wine in your glass. Absolutely. You know, the one that you want to enjoy. But what I really like is, is something, even with Pinot Noir, is something like fish, you know, because it's delicate enough and it, it's, you know, you can, you can try and, and yeah. experiment. And that's the most amazing thing. You know, sometimes even if it doesn't work, it is a silly experience. Exactly. You know, and, um, but I think this is going to be great. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's just try a little bit of cheese. Normally what we'll do is we'll have a bit of a bite of a cheese coating the mouth. So letting that flavor come through and then having a sip of the wine and seeing how that flavor changes, seeing how that it kind of goes in your mouth. And I think that this is going to taste beautiful. It does. It really does. This, is, this cheese is actually from Stanford. This is a, a Clane River Stanford cheese. Um, slightly oaked. Also probably works quite well with the slight oakiness of the Chardonnay. Absolutely. But also what is interesting is that the, the, the saltiness of the cheese actually brings out the salinity in the wine. Mm. And as you swallow the wine, it actually makes you thirsty and you want to drink and eat another little piece, you know, and that's exactly what you want with something like Shaka Tree. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, it's interesting that we've done the Shaka Tree board as well. Very French, you know, the two, the Chardonnay, the Pinot Noir from Burgundy kind of falls in line with, with what we're kind of going on. And that's always what I was trying to explain a lot about food and wine pairing. It's about situation. It's about where you are, how you're feeling on the day, like, a beautiful doesn't matter what kind of wine it is it could be a, um, a sauvignon blanc that you're enjoying on the beach eating fish and chips it just like that kind of pairing does not get better because of the whole environment that you're in you know absolutely and it's really about situations and i think that pairing is should be kind of opened up to whatever you want try it out and i but i think that this works particularly well fantastic <laughs> great stuff mm. this is perfect so i hope that you've enjoying that at home making sure that you're eating your cheese board with you, your wife, your, your husband, your, your, your friends, enjoying this beautiful wine um, at home. Please make sure that you are taking photos and hashtag pick and pay PMP wine club and Paul Kluver. All right, perfect. So once we've kind of gone over that a little bit, we're just making sure that you've got, still got your pot of boiling water on the stove. It's simmering away nicely. We're going to get moving on to the gnocchi sometime soon. And we've also got our bowl. Hopefully you'll see what's happened here is the water has been absorbed into your, there we go. 
is that you can see that it's that it's all really hydrated now as well and then there we go perfect okay that's good stuff all right cool so that's what we're going to do um and yeah so let's just chat about that a little bit um i'm going to get this hot plate working i've got a little cord over here which i'm going to move across quickly there we are okay. there we go um, I'm going to plug it into that one over there now, um, just with an extension cable, if that's cool. I think it's over there. Not too sure. All right, perfect. But yeah, so the next wine we're going to try out is going to be the? The Estate Pinot Noir. Estate Pinot Noir. Amazing. All right, cool. So do you want to explain a little bit of the Estate Pinot Noir? Yes. Um, well, just pour this. Okay. I always find it's always easier to talk about wine when you've got a glass of wine in your hand. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So Pinot Noir is, is one of those um, very difficult varietals to, to work with. It's a very temperamental varietal in the sense mm. that it's, it's what we call a cool climate variety. It needs a cool climate to really shine. Um, it's a wine that's always going to be lighter in color. So if you look at the color of the wine, it's never going to be dark and concentrated. Uh, and that's because it's inherently genetically a, a part of the makeup of the variety, but it produces the most beautiful aromatic wines, you know, wines with a little bit of violets and red fruit. You know, we always talk about strawberry, you know, sort of in cherry flavors in, in Pinot Noir and subtlety. You know, the most in, incredible Pinot Noirs are, are those wines that, that every time you take a sip, you discover a new flavor. Um, Sometimes they can be quite rustic as well, mm. um, but and there's also a, a component to to Pinot Noir which we refer to as slightly earthy, slightly you know forest floor mushroom characters, which I think is going to be very go well with the mushrooms in in the gnocchi. Exactly. So as we were explaining, you've probably got your your mushrooms here ready to they're ready soaked, and that really is kind of why we sort of chose this dish of this creamy mushroom dish. Um, we've also got some truffle. It's going to work quite nicely with the um, with the Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. It really is, and you'll see that it's, it's they've softened really, really nicely. Got some beautiful sort of it's coming up nicely there. You'll see that inside your dish, and we'll we'll go back a little bit about that just now once we've once we've um, tasted a little bit more about the Pinot Noir, and we can also talk a little bit more about but Paul Cleaver and 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 the the why and why did you decide what to do a Pinot Noir in in the valley of Elgin well we actually you know being pioneers in the valley we planted Cabernet Sauvignon we planted Shiraz we planted yeah. Merlot and I was privileged enough um I was actually still a student mm -hmm. and I was privileged enough to go to to work at Chateau Margaux in Bordeaux Amazing. where they make Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot and Cabernet Franc and and, and we thought that our flagship wine is going to be going to be a, a, a Bordeaux blend or red yes. blend. And so much so that we got Paul Pontalia out, uh, who was the director at Chateau Margo, came to taste wines with us. And tasting through all the wines, he said, well, this is good. And, and Paul, my brother-in-law, uh, just read the book, um, Good to Great. And he said, he doesn't want to be good. We want to be great. And we want the wine to be great. And, and um, and Paul Pontellier said, you know, the wine is good, you know, it's okay, but it's, you know, for him, you know, it wasn't great. And he said, well, let's taste your Pinot Noir because mm. you also make Pinot Noir. And, and his response was, this is amazing. Incredible. You know, um, and, and that was back in 2004. And although we made Pinot Noir and other red wines, next vintage, we stopped making all the other red wines really? focused only on Pinot Noir. And, you know, it's the most difficult variety to work with. You is know, it? It's, it's, you know, because Pinot Noir is temperamental. Mm. You know, you struggle to get color. But if you overwork the grapes, you over extract and, and it becomes, you know, almost Shiraz like and bold and it loses the elegance. And, and the greatest thing about Pinot Noir is the purity, is the elegance of it, you know, and, and you've got to, to, um, highlight that and that's what we try to to highlight in in, in the wine is that's that so purity? interesting exactly it's it's the complexity but it isn't a really heavy wine no. you know i mean it is a lighter sort of drinking wine it's a wine that you really want to have over lunchtime it is a wine that you can enjoy let's sort of plug this in quickly it's, it's a wine that you, that you can enjoy throughout the day <laughs> throughout Absolutely. the day any time of the day and that's what i love about the pinot noir 
Yeah. Um, you know, you don't have to feel like if you're drinking a bottle of cab at lunchtime, you might feel a little bit sleepy in the afternoon. Exactly. And, and the other great thing about, you know, being in a cool climate is that we find that we have what we call a slow ripening season. So we've got a much longer hang time, you know, because, um, you know, and that gives you very typicity of flavor development. But the other thing is also we get flavor and aroma development, you know, at the same time that we get sugar mm. ripeness. So we we don't have this big, heavy, high alcohol wines, you know, yeah. Pinot, you know, this one is only 13 and a half percent alcohol is light, it's elegant, but it's not and it's perfectly balanced with with food. And that's the great thing about Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is a food wine, you, you know, you can have it, you know, a glass on your own, but it's so much better with food. Absolutely. You could even pair it with fish. It's so light. It really is. It's, it's, a, it's a very versatile sea it, food pairing wine. Sea tuna and pinot yeah. or sea salmon yeah. is, is, in my opinion, the best match for, for pinot noir. Incredible. I'd like to try that too. All right, so, everybody. I just want to make sure that you've got all your things ready. You've got your pot of boiling water on. Um, just make sure that it is boiling and it is salted. I always talk about salted water. It's so important when you're actually cooking. There's nothing worse in my mind, then, then something that has been boiled in water that it doesn't have salt in it. And to understand the, the, the perfect um, way to do the, the perfect amount of salt to put in water, I always say that it must taste like the Mediterranean Sea. You can actually taste the salt in it. A lot of people are like, oh, it's got salt in it. You cook a potato in it, it doesn't taste like it's salt. Okay, cool. So, as I said, mushrooms, everybody, you've got your mushrooms. Now what you can do is you can strain those mushrooms out of that water. So if you've got a colander, fantastic. If you don't, just lose, use a lid of a pot and strain that into, the, um, into a sink for you. There we go. And you can set that aside. So these mushrooms have now rehydrated and they would be ready to go. Your pot of boiling water has got the salt in. Add a little bit more. I always like a bit of salt. Something my grandmother taught me. Salt it up. All right. And then we've got this gnocchi. And this is such a convenient product that's available at Pick and Pay. It is a gnocchi that doesn't take 40 minutes to cook, to, to prepare. Um, it is ready to go. So open up your packets. You can see that it's ready to go. Beautiful gnocchi. Gnocchi is made with potatoes. It's, got a, it's really light and fluffy, um, and we're going to pop that into our pot of boiling water. So make sure that your, your bo the water is actually boiling before you put it in, also it will become a little bit stodgy. Um, so everybody open up their packets, I'm going to wait for two seconds until everyone's done that, and then once we've done that, we're going to put it into the pot. Um, the pot is, we're going to cook it for about three or four minutes, and the perfect way to know that your gnocchi is done is when it starts to rise to the top. You'll see that some stay at the bottom and some start getting a little bit more um, agitated and come to the top. And once all of those have come to the top, we're going to strain it. Okay, so I'll give you guys two seconds to do that. If you've got any little bits and pieces around your kitchen or you've got your sous chef, let's clear it up. It's always nice to have a clean station. There we go. And we'll, we'll move on to that one. And the reason, as I said, that we've chosen this gnocchi dish is really about the earthy flavors of those mushrooms and quite an exciting little addition which we've added in here is a bit of truffle, yes. which is very exciting. And not, you don't often taste truffle, so it's going to be quite an <clears throat> um, experience for a couple of people. Um, there's Italian little truffles, and there are also some French truffles. You have black truffles and you have white truffles. The white truffles are normally Italian. The black truffles are normally from yeah. France, um, the center of France. Hey? Yeah, and it's sort of south of France as well. Yeah, Perigord and stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, uh, interesting, interesting thing, a truffle. I mean, it's, a, it's actually like a little fungus that grows underneath the ground and they get um, pigs to sniff them out. Yes, that's, <clears throat> and it's amazing to, to go on truffle hunts, you know, um, and, and they're quite expensive mm. um, uh, if you could get some nice fresh ones. You know, um, and don't travel with them in your luggage. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that is the one thing about truffles. They are hugely expensive because they're very, very rare. So you're very lucky to be having some truffle dust today. So hopefully your water is boiled. And now what you can do is you can pop your gnocchi into the water. All right, so we'll just pour all of that into it. The beauty of this kind of gnocchi is that it doesn't take very long to cook at all. 
it probably takes about three to four minutes um, on high. We'll just pop that up to make sure that it's that it boils. And as I said, there's that rolling boil which you'll need, and you'll see that it comes up very, very quickly. So let's get all of our other ingredients ready while we while this is um, it's boiling. Inside your pack, you'll see that you've got two little tubs of some Parmesan cheese. You've also got some two little packs of some beautifully toasted pumpkin seeds, and that'll add a lovely crunch and a little bit of nuttiness to it. Yep. And also, you'll see that you've got some crispy onions, beautiful texture. Great. And then this beauty of a little packet of uh, truffle dust. And then the last thing is we've got a little bit of dried our thyme, and that'll be really good for our, um, for our um, uh, garnish as well. All right. Cool. So once that is boiled, what we're going to do is just watch it kind of come to a, a rolling boil, and then we will start moving on to putting another pan onto the onto the stove which is going to be for our cream as well so inside your box you'll see this beautiful little bit of cream and that's going to give it a really good creaminess, creaminess as well. to, to the taste yes. exactly all right cool so um yeah i mean so basically what we were chatting about which is also quite interesting about the fact that these are both sort of french wines is that there's been a real increase in, in alcohol levels in, in various wines around the world. Is that well, correct? Well, it's interesting. I was reading an article and we were chatting about it earlier that uh, you know, there's, there has been an increase over the past few years, yeah. especially in areas, you know, in the areas where the increase was the biggest was Bordeaux, south of France, where they make Cabernet Sauvignon, um, you know, and then also in America. Um, and it, basically down to a couple of things, you know, winemakers, chasing bigger bolder styles of wine mm. but also climate change ah, has also play, really? plays a role you know what is interesting is in what in burgundy the alcohol levels are really be, relatively stable and coming back to home for us in a cool climate area we don't need to chase that that ripeness ah, for you sure. know um so we don't chase alcohol levels in in wine we want our wines to be fresh and elegant and almost delicate to a, to a certain yes point. yeah yes absolutely Okay, fantastic. Cool. So once this is boiled, and I would imagine that your gnocchi is coming up to the boil at the moment, um, we're going to move over to using a pan, um, which we're going to reduce a little the cream in it as well. So once we are at that point, um, just make sure that your sous chef has got uh, a pan ready over here. You'll see you've got a pan ready to go. That is going to be for our cream. Make sure that that is all in, in, in order. And we've probably got like another one or two minutes just to boil this, um, this pasta, I mean, this, this gnocchi. Okay, make sure that you've also got a strainer ready. We're going to pour the water out of the strainer into a pan, um, and we're going to cook that now as well. All right, so once we're there, I think that what we can do is I'm just going to strain this behind here in our little back kitchen over yep. here. I'm just going to strain it out. It all would have boiled up to the point. There we go. There we go, and I'm going to move over to our pan. pan here we go so that'll go on there and we're going to put it on i would imagine on a medium heat so we've got our gnocchi it's really nice and soft now it's probably taken on a lot of that flavor of the of the salted water as well um, and what we'll do is i'm just going to add a small amount of oil to the pan so hopefully everyone's got their pans on at the moment and we're going to add a little bit of our oil, not too much, just a small amount of our oil. There we go. And we're going to add the gnocchi and the mushrooms to that. There we go. So do you like cooking yourself? Yes, I do. I do. I, I think, you know, if you, if you, most winemaker friends of mine all, you know, cause we love if food and wine is, is something that goes together. So I love cooking. Um, and, uh, I actually, you know, quite enjoy, you know, I grew up as a, as a kid going to Namibia. So, you know, like all South African males, we like meat, you yeah. know, um, I particularly like venison, um, you know, but a couple of things that I do at home quite, or that even when we have guests or people coming over, uh, if it's for the business, Paul always asks me to to make a bit of uh, muscle. I, okay, is that I one of your favourites? I do make a nice uh, moule marinier. Oh, love a moule marinier with the chardonnay. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and and normally what I serve with that is a sourdough bread. 
Okay. But, um, and for the sourdough, I actually, because my Chardonnay is wild fermented and non-inoculated, yes. what I do is I take a little bit of the lees. Anything in wine that settles down to the bottom, yes. we call lees. But that contains a lot of yeast cells, and which is now inactive because there's no more sugars to ferment. And then I basically make a little bit of a sourdough from the, the Chardonnay, which is wild fermented. That yeah. is more than chefy, my friend. That is unbelievable. And, I like and that. And then, um, yeah, with the moulin marinier, and I actually quite, I quite like make, like to make a bit of duck confit as well. Oh, um, you've obviously spent a bit of time in France. Yes, obviously, I've spent some time <laughs> working in wineries in, in France, and yeah, you know, Burgundy is a place, and you know, that I really love to to visit and um, experience food, probably. One, and cheese, you know, and one of my favorite cheeses is is, is a poise. Oh, um, yeah. Probably one of the stinkiest cheeses you can you, find. You, 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 I actually, I, I do know about this cheese. My my French, my wife is French, and uh, she did actually, the last time I was there, we did actually taste it a poise. And it, when I would say it is the most stinky cheese in the world, I think it could be. It's banned on public <clears throat> transport in, it really, in France. Yeah. So, you know, but it's amazing. So I quite like, yes, and I do love cooking. Yeah. Amazing. All right, cool. So once we've got our pan hot, it's probably on a medium heat at the moment. We're going to add our gnocchi into that, into that pan. And we're going to start frying slowly that, that, uh, that gnocchi. And we're going to add now that your rehydrated mushrooms. So everyone grab their rehydrated mushrooms. Your pan should be uh, on a medium heat. We're going to add those mushrooms to it. There we go. Looks amazing. And uh, we can give it a little bit of a toss around. There we go. And what we'll do now is we're going to add our cream. So everyone in their boxes has received this little bit of cream. Um, and what we'll do is we'll pop that into the pan. And that cream is going to draw into the, um, into the mushrooms. It's going to draw into And as well, a little bit of pepper, you can do so as well. There we go. And there we go. So on the stoves, you should have your pan. It should be warming up nicely, cooking a little bit through. Don't go too hot. You don't want it to bubble over and boil over. You just want it to kind of come together very nicely in the pan. Um, cool. So when it comes to making dishes like this, I always think that it's always, always good to start layering flavors. It's always good to start adding things. And like, for me, I love to add one thing after the next and sort of just when, it, when they all complement and they, and they layer. And when you're talking about dishes and, um, and food, I like to also have contrasting textures as well. Absolutely. And, it, and that makes life interesting. It makes food interesting and yeah. Exactly. So what we've got, as I said, we've also got these pumpkin seeds, which will add quite a nice amount of, um, of crunch and we've also got these beautiful um, little crispy onions and these crispy onions are really cool to do um, all they are is, is, is onions that we've sliced very very thin and we've dehydrated them in the in the oven and you add a little bit of a uh, little bit of vinegar a little bit of cayenne pepper and it'll give it a, quite a nice little punch to the dish as well all right so when it comes to plating choose a plate it doesn't matter if you're going to use a bowl um, obviously, this dish is for two people. It's for you and your partner. You've got your wine. You've got your um, gnocchi dish coming up. So grab a plate. And um, it all depends on how you've been cooking your gnocchi. But it should have absorbed a little bit of that cream, a little bit um, um, of those flavors. Um, and so we'll just give it a nice little toss around as well. There we go. And you'll have those mushrooms um, coming up really nicely as well. So. Grab a plate, doesn't matter what kind of plate it is. I quite like a, a sort of a, a broad rimmed plate. So you'll be able to kind of get a lot of those flavors and all those crunches, crunchinesses around as well. So it should be coming up nicely. You'll see that your mushrooms have sort of softened, softened really well as well. Um, and that the cream has started to reduce quite nicely as well. So I hope everybody is, uh, is following me quite well. If you've got any questions, please put it into the chat box. 
If you've got any things that you'd like to change or you'd like to um, substitute, you can do that too. Um, if you don't want to use some of the crispy onions, you can use some seeds, some sesame seeds if you want to. You can use a little bit of pine nuts, which would be beautiful in it as well. If you do have any fresh herbs in, the, in, your, in your fridge, don't be afraid to use a little bit of fresh herbs. Give that a little bit of flavor as well. Okay, so we're almost ready for a little bit of plating, I think. What we'll do is um, we've got our bowl and we're going to start plating this up. I'm going to move this away so you can see a little bit about what I'm doing. I'm going to plate this right into the middle. Um, and this is for two people, so you can share this with uh, whoever you are enjoying your pick and pay wine uh, winemakers experience with. What I always like to do as well is to, to make sure that all of the, um, mushrooms. the mushrooms are visible as well. And so you'll see there, if you can focus in on it, that I've just placed it in the middle from a plating perspective, a little bit of a chefy perspective. It's always nice to see a little bit of plate as well. Um, and so we'll pop that down over there. Divide it up into two plates if you can. Um, I'll give you a little bit of time to kind of work through that a little bit. Um, just make sure that you put it into two plates. You've got your bottles of wine ready. You've got your, um, your, um, all your other ingredients ready. And then what we'll do is we'll move on to plating. But while we're plating it, let's have another little sip of this uh, beautiful Pinot Noir. And, um, you know, I think that as I was saying that, you know, I spent a bit of time in France as well. And, the, and one of the things that came out when I moved there, and it, it was a long time ago, and I wasn't really sort of exposed to a huge amount of wine back then, was that there's a massive difference between the South African wine at the, then and the Burgundy wines um, of France. They, they are, they, there's, a, there's a slight difference in terms of their sort of their, their body and their alcohol content and it's, it's they are very different which is which is quite interesting yeah so in general south africa you know you burgundy uses two two wines you know uh, and that's pinot noir and chardonnay okay yeah? um and that's what you know we do and what we pinot noir and chardonnay shines in cool climate there's there's pockets in in the rest of the, you know chardonnay is quite interesting in the sense that there's pockets in the country where they they excel you know yes. um there's in robertson there's limestone which gives the wine a distinctive character we've got we our, all our vines are grown on what we call um Bockefell shale it's a type mm. of shale soil with clay underneath and if you if you taste wine with winemakers in burgundy they will tell you that clay gives the wine structure and that's what we're after we want the we want the structure and structure is the foundation of you know, like the gnocchi is the foundation of yes. this wine, you know, and, and the mushrooms and the cream does add another dimension. And that's what we want. We want the structure to be the foundation of the wine and the, the flavor and the, the acidity and all the other um, parts in the wine plays a role to lift the wine, Absolutely. you know, and that's what you want. You know? um, and uh, Burgundy is an amazing place, but South Africa is even more so. You know, and Completely. and the diversity that we have is amazing. If we just think of, you know, there's there's the the Flolo Kingdom in the Western Cape is the most diverse in the world. In the world, you know, absolutely. And, and that diversity is because we've got such a diversity of swell. Yeah. And that's why, you know, um, what the most amazing thing is that winemakers tend to share wines and we tend to share knowledge and we but nobody can make a wine like I do because they don't have my grapes. They don't have my terroir. They don't Absolutely. have my growing conditions. You know, they can, they can take their grapes. They can do exactly what I do. It'll be totally different. It'll be totally different. Yeah. And that's the most amazing yeah. part of wine, you know, and that's part of my role is to highlight what is the best of what Paul Kluver can produce, you know, Absolutely. what the best of our fruit is. And that's what my role as a, as a winemaker is. Well, what an yeah. incredible job you have. I really am very jealous, Thank apart you. from the fact that you are living on um, Paul Cleaver Estate and you get to mountain bike all of those beautiful trails as well. Well, I do, I do mountain bike myself, yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and uh, we're currently busy building a new bridge for Wines to Wells and the Epic at, at the oh. moment, like Dan referred to some of the bridges on the farm, and we're busy, Beautiful. busy with another one, yeah. Oh, and you, you're a bit of a mountain biker yourself. Yes, I, I, I'm not so fast on the climbs, yeah. but I can bomb it downhill. You can bomb it downhill, that's all that counts, the <laughs> yes. speed. 
Fantastic. All right, guys. So I think that way we are at the moment is that hopefully you would have caught up and you would have plated your, um, your gnocchi. And as you were explaining about sort of adding flavors and adding textures, we are going to now add these beautiful um, pepitas or what we call toasted pumpkin seeds. And that'll give it a really nice texture. So you can place a few of those on top, just like that. Um, and then we'll all add another flavor texture, which are going to be our crispy onions. And these crispy onions, as I said, have just been dehydrated in the oven, added a little bit of smoked paprika, a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar. You can taste them and they are really delicious. I, I actually love mm. to use smoked paprika in, in food. Yeah, that's one of my favorites as well. It really is. So we're going to have quickly really good. pull that over there. And that's looking beautiful at the moment. And then for the final little, well, not the final, the, the second final coup de gras, we're going to add some, there we go, a little bit of the Parmesan cheese on top. This is going to be delicious. And then our final one, which is this is tiny little sachet of our, yeah, there we go. Just smell that. Oh, that is truffle. That truffle is oh, amazing. Is incredible. Oof. It's very, very strong, everybody. So that's why we're giving you one little sachet between the two. You'll see that this is actually um, an Italian truffle made in Italy. And this is quite a treat. All you need to do is put a small amount over your plates. Um, and you'll see what happens. You can smell it. It's this beautiful, earthy aroma that's going to come out of it. Have a look at that and smell oh, that. Oh, it smells amazing. It really does. The great got, thing about truffles, you don't need a lot of them. No, you really you, don't. You don't need a lot of them. No, absolutely. So if you guys want to have a look and see the plating over here, it's got some beautiful dusting of some Parmesan cheese, the crunch of the, um, the, the crispy onions, as well as the um, pumpkin seeds. Uh, you've got your mushrooms as well. This is a, actually a dish that would be very much restaurant worthy. So very proud of you guys. If you got to that point, I'm sure that you have been taking some photos and posting them to social media. Please let us know how delicious that is. And what we'll do next is we're going to actually do a pairing where we will start tasting the Pinot Noir with the dish. And then we will can see is we'll chat a little bit about how well that works together. Oh, I forgot nearly, nearly forgot that there's a little bit of thyme as well. And that thyme, we must also garnish that with it as well. So we'll pop it on top, one or two little sprigs of that. Okay, and that's perfect. All right, so we've got a, a really nice, interesting question from one of the other one of the guests: Is do you make a Chardonnay Pinot Noir blend? No, I don't. <laughs> no, we stick to single variety wines. Um, yeah, I think uh, Chardonnay Pinot Noir as a blend worked very well in in Champagne, uh, but I would rather make. Uh, single varietal Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Fantastic. This is for you. You're going to you. taste it. Um, let me know what you think. Thank you. <clears throat> and um, everybody at home, let's start eating your, your um, beautiful yes. gnocchi. <clears throat> Take a little bite. Get all of those flavors. Make sure that you've got a little bit of the sunflower, the, the pumpkin seeds. Make sure you've got a little bit of the crispy onions. Make sure that you have um, tasting a little bit of that truffle oil. And then have a sip of this beautiful Pinot Noir. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah. And that truffle and the mushrooms brings out the earthiness of the Pinot Noir, mm. you know, the, sort of the savoriness of, his, of, of the wine. Beautiful, beautiful dish. I'm going to give it a try myself as yes. well. Um, and what's quite fun about this is that how quick and easy was that to produce really a restaurant style dish with these beautiful exotic mushrooms that are available at Pick and Pear. Mm. All you need to do was dehydrate them, keep them in your fridge if you want to, or you can use fresh. It's absolutely fine. You can change this up if you'd like to as well. Add a little bit of butternut, add a little bit of tomato if you'd like to. It's so versatile. With this gnocchi, how quick was that? That took 15 minutes. Everyone's a a, a Jamie Oliver 15 minute meals person now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I love the crunch of the, the, mm. the onions and the, and, the, and the pumpkin seeds. Yeah, this works really, really well. I think that, as you were saying, with 
a food and wine pairing, try things. Absolutely. I mean, try it out. It doesn't matter if it's not going to work. <clears throat> it, it might work for one person. It might not work for the other person. It's really about preferences. And I think that I'm all about trying as many wines as possible, trying as much food as possible, seeing what works. And it's all about giving it, giving it a good go. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's about, you know, it's the same thing about life. It, it's food. If you, if you're not going to try it and not try to do something new, you're never going to learn. So, um, yeah. No, I think this is good. I think this is, this is very good. And I think that it's basically, we're going to enter a new little realm. If you guys have, um, have followed quite nicely at, at home, I think that, um, definitely do this one again and um pinot noir being a global a little bit higher trend. a little global trend yeah i mean i think that we were chatting about it earlier and there's not a huge amount of wine farms in south africa that are actually doing pinot noir and i think that i think it's becoming a really popular wine it is you know what is interesting most of the pinot noirs in south africa is planted either in stanamor paul and robertson mm because it's used in, in sparkling wine, you know, mm. in what we call you know, so, uh, method Cap Classic yeah. or Cap Classic, you know, where, where it's bottle fermented sparkling wine. Uh, the, the most planted Pinot Noir that's used for, for red wine is planted in the Elgin in the Yimala Arda Valley and a little bit also in Stellenbosch, but the focus of Pinot Noir is actually Elgin in the Yimala Arda Valley. Uh, you know, um, yes. And globally, it's, it's one of the top eight most planted varieties you really? know um but it's just used in a lot of different blends it's in south africa it's used in blends or in sparkling or in sparkling wine, wine. But, no. but for us you know um the most interesting examples and some of the most expensive wines in the world um mm. is from you know is red wine pinot noir mm. and and it's a it's a slow bit you know it's, it's a it's not a high bearing variety so from a commercial point of view commercial farmers you know they don't like it that much because it's actually a low bearer uh -huh, you know for sure you've got very tiny tiny bunches yes. um you know and um thin skin variety so it's difficult to farm yes it's difficult to make great wine from it but the the best thing about pinot noir is once you've tasted a great wine you don't want to go back no you know it's it's the most amazing most complex wines that you can find in the world in my opinion is pinot noir and um i just love them you know yeah. It's, it's yeah no i totally agree with you it has always been one of my favorites and i'm very very excited and very very happy to have shared this with you um i think that we've we've got a pairing that works absolutely absolutely we've yeah. got it we, we've got it nailed down i think two that pairings that work definitely got two had two pairings that work and um yeah it's been it's been it's been a really good evening and i hope that you guys have enjoyed it as well Please sit down and relax and enjoy the rest of your bottles of wine. Um, it's going to be a good evening, I'm sure. Enjoy your food. Try and make it with friends as well. You know, the best thing about the Pick and Pay Wine Club is they offer so much variety of, of specials, of different wines. So invite your friends around. Do a wine pairing. Choose something. Find three bottles of wine. Pair it with it. Try it out. Experiment with your friends. It really is about opening up wine to everybody. And I think that that is the most amazing thing that Pick and Pay Wine Club have done is they've made wine so accessible for everybody. And we've been uh, very blessed to have uh, experienced this with, with, with you, Andres. And um, I think that it's going to be really, really good going forward with all of our, our wine club um, winemakers tables. So as Dan might have mentioned in the boxes as well, you guys have got some really, really great deals as being a wine club member. You're also going to get 25% off these two wines up until the 4th of July. They were normally 310 and yeah. now they're going for 232.50. I think that is the yeah. case. So make sure that you do go to pick and pay and buy these two wines for a great 25% off. Also inside your, your boxes, you will receive and you have received your 100 Rand voucher if you go and buy any wines at pick and pay online um, for the next couple of weeks. So use that, um, use that voucher and then please definitely come back to the next of the, the pick and pay winemakers tables as well. We've got some beautiful wines lined up. We've got some great um, vineyards and some great winemakers coming up. I think the next one might be Neil Ellis and um, make sure also that you have posted all of your photos to social media and using the hashtag pick and pay wine club and PNP and, and, and hashtag Paul Kluver. Um, 
because you guys are standing a chance of winning 200 rands worth of smart shopper points as well. So make sure that you are posting. We're going to announce the winners at the end of it when we move over to, um, to Dan, who's just going to thank everybody as well. And I'd like to thank you again, Andres. It's been an incredible evening. I really, really enjoyed it. We've tasted some beautiful wines. We've eaten some incredible food. And I really appreciate your time to be here. Well, thank you, Jonathan. And thank you to Pick and Pay for the opportunity to share my wines and my passion with you guys. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. And absolutely. And thank you to Pick and Pay Online for delivering all the boxes as well. And um, yeah, over to you, Dan. Thank you very much, everybody. And we'll see you next time. And uh, enjoy your, enjoy your meals, enjoy your wine. Well, a, uh, a thunderous virtual round of applause there for Andres as well as for Jonathan, who've given us a, a quite splendid night. Uh, I think the, uh, the charcuterie and cheese were another great example of, uh, of just how good uh, the, uh, the food and wine are together. Uh, so uh, a big thank you for that example, but also great to have together the, uh, the gnocchi. Uh, and whether it's as it was made or throwing a bit of bolognese on or trying it with some, uh, some mascarpone and some smoked salmon, there's so much you can do with gnocchi. It's great winter food, but most importantly, it's really, really easy. So if like me, you're a very lazy chef, it is a fantastic, fantastic option. Uh, in terms of the rest of the night, well, there's just a couple of things to do to once again, thank you uh, to Pick and Pay Online and uh, thank you to the Pick and Pay Wine Club uh, for supporting this evening, getting all that wine out to you and laying the platform for what's been a terrific night with Paul Kluver. Uh, I think you would have seen with Andres, He's a remarkable winemaker. He's enormously passionate about what he does. And the wines that he creates in Elgin are superb. And the Pinot Noir, whether it's the estate we had tonight, somebody asked about the different Pinot Noirs that they make. There's the village Pinot Noir, which speaks to the Burgundian village range, the day-to-day -day reds, or the, uh, the seven flags, which is uh, the very high tier. It's a wedding anniversary type night wine. Uh, you've got three great selections and three great interpretations of their wine, both Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. And uh, that will give you a, a great uh, great understanding of how you can interpret all three of those wines. And you can look out for them at Pink and Pay. And you can get the wines tonight, as was mentioned by Jonathan, at that terrific discount. And that discount runs till the 4th of July. And there are your regular discounts as a member of the Pick and Pay Wine Club. Now, there are also some competition winners just before you dash off to finish your wine and enjoy the rest of your dinner. And I have a list of them here. Um, now, this is a guy called Ricardo, who is Pick and Pay's global head of competitions. And he sent through to me exactly who has won. Uh, and you'll know who you are. Some of these are handles as opposed to actual names, or at least I think so. So our five winners, and each of you have a 200 Rand voucher that is in pick and pay points, and the uh, pick and pay team will source all of those out for you. Uh, Candace Bester, HRH Princess Pam, royalty in the house tonight, Dennis Branches, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, Mikhaili Iwanski, and Heidi van der Vest. I presume that's Heidi van der Vest, and you are each winner. So, congratulations. You've posted some terrific photos, you've engaged wonderfully, and there will be 200 Rand worth of pick and pay smart shopper points headed your way. And again, I think it's just really important to remind you, if you are a member of the Pick and Pay Wine Club, as you should be, it is three times the smart shopper points. It's great deals on bottles, on magnums, on cases, and it's a chance to support a South African wine industry that's really been under siege for the last 18 months and your chance to drink great wine, but help out the wonderful people in the industry. And as you saw from Andres, they really are wonderful, wonderful people. Big thank you to, uh, to Jonathan. He created some terrific, really accessible food for us. We got to make some really cool dishes that aren't actually that complicated once you know what you're doing. So Jonathan, a big, big thank you. And a, a special thank you to all of you, 160 of you who have joined us today. And who I hope will be joining us again. The 22nd of July, we head off to Neil Ellis virtually. Neil Ellis is one of the great Stellenbosch names and making terrific wine. What wine are we drinking? Well, you'll have to join us to find out, but I can guarantee you it will be terrific wine. And Jonathan will be providing us wine to savor in partnership with that. You've got your 100 grand voucher. If I were you, I'd jump straight online now and get some of that Paul Kluver Estate Chardonnay and Pinot 
are, because as you've discovered today, not just two wonderful wines, but versatile wine, because I think both wines worked so well with both of the dishes and brought something different out of both of them. And that from uh, Dan Really Likes Wine is something we love to support, the exploring of wine, the discovery of wine, and just finding fun and finding something different in so much wine and no better place to do so than on the shelves of Pick and Pay. So enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the rest of your wine. Please don't feel compelled to finish it. You'll often find that over a day or two, uh, the wine sometimes develops a little. It gets a little bit more air, a little more oxygen into it, and it develops some slightly different characteristics, and it adds a bit of interest to it. But of course, if you've got a few friends around, well, uh, by all means, finish it off, enjoy the meal, and enjoy what I feel has been a great evening, and I hope all of you feel so as well. Once more, huge thank you to Jonathan. Dries from Paul Kluver, Jonathan from Source Food, and to the Pick and Pay online team, the Pick and Pay wine club, and the whole team behind the scenes, uh, Ricardo, Lauren, Katie, and everybody else who's put this together. And we'll see you, if not before, on the 22nd of July, Wine with Neil Ellis, Food with Jonathan, and another terrific celebration of South African food and wine and the wonderful combination that they make together. I'm Dan Nickel from Dan Really Likes Wine. Uh, you can watch the show every week on our digital channels, Dan Really Likes Wine. We'd love to see you there. But if not, then we'll see you back on the 22nd of July. Uh, so enjoy the evening. Thanks for being with us and goodbye. Yeah.